In this video, we're looking at how to use the graphing calculator to find area under the normal bell curve. In this case, the standard normal bell curve because we have the variable z in our problem. All right, so let's start with the technique that we should use to have good habits, which is to draw a picture first. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw the bell curve for the first example that we want to solve. So if we look at that problem, we're saying that we're looking for the probability that z is between negative 1.99 and 0.89 on the bell curve. So I'm going to draw a little bell curve here. And I'm going to make sure that I label the center of that curve at zero. So this is the z number line. And the negative 1.199, so negative 1.99 up to 0.89 I'll draw on the curve on the number line in the appropriate places. For example, I want the negative 1.99 on the left because it's negative, so it should be on the left of zero, and the 0.89 on the right because it's positive, so it should be on the right-hand side of zero. Now, because z is physically between these two things, I want to actually shade between those two numbers. So the area I'm looking for is the area between negative 1.99 and 0.89. Okay, so that's the area I'm looking for. Now once we have that, we're ready to use our calculator. What we're actually going to do on the calculator is we're going to press these keystrokes. We're going to put second, we're going to go to the VARS key on the calculator. So it'll be second, then press the VARS key on the calculator. Then from there, when I'm there, I'm going to take option number two, which is going to be normal CDF. So normal CDF, and when I have that, I'm going to enter a series of values that the calculator needs from me. And what it wants from me is it wants the left bound, so I'm going to say the left number essentially, then the right number. Now for a scenario where you have z, you don't need to give the calculator anything more. However, in general it also wants the mean and standard deviation. So we could pencil in the mean and standard deviation here, but if you don't put it, it's going to assume that your mean and standard deviation are 0 and 1. So in other words, for the case of the standard normal curve, we don't have to enter these values because the calculator assumes them. So we can just enter the left number and the right number for our shaded region. So in this case, the shaded region begins at negative 1.99, it ends at 0.89. So this is going to be my left number, right? And this will be my right number. Okay, so that's all we have to do to finish the problem with our calculator. So let's check that out and see how it works. So here's my graphing calculator. I'm going to turn it on, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put second, press the VARS key, and I'm going to go down to where I see normal CDF, which is option two. So down to option two, hit enter, and now it's looking at me blinking, and what it wants me to give it is the left number. The left number is negative 1.99, so negative 1.99. Again, make sure you use the negative key. The negative key is actually this key on your calculator at the bottom of the screen not the subtraction key. So negative 1.99, then you're going to press the comma key, you're going to give it the positive number 0.89. Close up your parentheses, hit enter, and you have your solution. The answer turns out to be 0.78997 or 0 0.7900 basically. So 0.7900. Alright, so the overall answer here is 0.7900. And that's your solution. All right, so for our second example here, we're going to do the probability that z is greater than 2.58. All right, so let's look at that one, and the probability that z is greater than 2.58. So I'm going to draw my bell curve as before. And I'll label my z-axis with 0 in the center. And then from there, I'm going to put 2.58 where it belongs. That would be somewhere on the right-hand side of the curve since it's positive. And looking for the probability that z is greater than 2.58 means I'm going to be shading the area to the right. So I need this area here. That's what I'm looking for. All right, now what our calculator is going to ask from us is it wants to know the start of the shaded region and it wants to know where the shaded region ends. So this one's a little bit different, right? When you look at it, you say, well, gee, this one starts at 2.58, right? But where does it end? Well, the answer to where it ends is essentially 
it ends at infinity, right? It keeps going on and on to infinity. So what we're going to use is basically infinity, but our calculator doesn't have that, so we're going to put a very large number. The number we're going to put is 10 to the 99th power. 10 to the 99th power for the calculator is virtually infinity. It's a huge number, and so because of that, the calculator will give us the proper probability here. All right, so that's what we're going to do then. We're going to hit second again. We're going to press bars. We're going to take option two where it says normal CDF. And then we're going to give it the left end point, which is 2.58. We're going to go up to 10 to the 99th power. And then if you want to, you can enter 0 and 1. Just a reminder what 0 and 1 is. This is the left number, right? This was the right number that we entered. And this is the mean, and this is the standard deviation. So those are the values that we're giving the calculator, right? You don't have to give it 0 and 1 because it assumes that by default. So if you just close the parenthesis here, you would get the same result. But for future problems, we will have to enter that. So you might start practicing it by using it now. All right, let's use our calculator then to finish this problem up. All right, so we're going to do exactly what we wrote down there to solve the problem, right? So let's turn on our calculator. And we're going to do second, and then the VARS key, then option 2. And then we're going to tell it 2.58 comma, 10 to the, here's our power key, to the 99th power, comma, 0, comma, 1, close it up, press enter, and we get the answer, 0 0.0049, 0 0.0049. So that means that this area here is 0 0.0049, and that's our solution. Okay, so now we're looking at example three here. Example three says the probability that z is less than negative 2.25. Probability z is less than negative 2.25. So as before, we're gonna draw a bell curve, right? So let's draw our bell curve. Because we're dealing with the z curve, we're gonna put a z number line here and put a zero in the center. And then we're going to put negative 2.25 somewhere here on the left-hand side because it's a negative value. Now, it says we want to find the probability that z is less than that, so less than is going to be all of this area to the left. Now, the calculator, remember, if we're going to use the calculator, it wants us to enter the left bound, or the starting point, in other words, as we read left to right, the starting point for the shaded region, then the ending point, right? And then the mean and standard deviation. So we're going to press second, then VARS. Then we're going to take option two, which is normal CDF. All right, but once we have that, what our calculator wants to know is basically where does the area start and where does it end? So the shaded area actually starts here on the very leftmost end, which actually is all the way down to negative infinity. So we have to write negative infinity somehow. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the value negative 10 to the 99th power. Negative 10 to the 99th power is going to represent for us negative infinity. And then we we'll hit comma, and we're going to go to our right end point of our shaded area, which is negative 2.25. And then, just for good form, we're going to give it the mean, which is 0, and the standard deviation, which is 1. So remember, this is your mean, this is your standard deviation, this is your left number, and this is your right number, right? Okay, so the left end of the shaded area, the right end of the shaded area, the mean, the standard deviation. Enter that in your calculator and you will have your solution. All right, so let's see what that gives us in the end. Okay, so looking at our um, graphing calculator here, we're going to press second, then VARS, take option two, which is normal CDF. Then we're going to give it the left number, or the left bound, which is going to be negative. Remember this negative key down here at the bottom of your screen, right? So minus 10 to the 99th power, comma. Then we're going to give it the number here, negative 2.25. So negative 2.25, comma, 0, comma, 1. And after putting that in, we hit enter, and we get the answer 0.0122. 0.0122. So that's the area here, 0 0.0122, or about 1.22%.
Okay, so now we're going to look at our final example of using the table, but we're going to using the calculator instead of a table, I should say. Our final example has the word or here in it. So example four here is saying find the probability that z is less than negative 2.72 or z is greater than 2.72 on the positive end. All right, so again, because it's about z, let's go ahead and draw a bell curve. So I'll draw a bell curve. labeling the center of the curve at zero. Now at that point, what we're gonna do is label negative 2.72 here on the left, because it's negative, and 2.72 positive on the right. So the negative one on the left, the positive one on the right, and then we'll shade the area we're looking for. It says z here is less than the negative value, so less than the negative value is to the left. And this one says z is greater than the positive value, so that means this part here. All right, so those are our two areas. Now, they're the curve is symmetric, so these are, are identical. If I found it one, I could just multiply by two to get both of them, right? So if I found the area for one of them, then I would just be able to say, well, twice that area is the area for both of them put together. The word or means to add, though, so I'd rather us do this literally using that technique. So in other words, I would like to put a plus in case these numbers weren't the same. If they aren't the same, you would have to do them separately. So let's do them separately. Use the word or as a plus sign, and we're going to work these out as two separate things and add them in our calculator at the same time. So where does this shaded region begin? That's the first thing I have to figure out. Where does the shaded region here start? Well, it starts over at negative 10 to the 99th power, which is our calculator's version of negative infinity. Now, the next thing is, where does this shaded region end? I know where it starts, but where does it end? Well, it ends at 10 to the 99th power, right? It ends at the calculator's version of infinity. All right, so if I put these two things in together, here's what I'm going to do. I will hit second, press the VARS key, right? So second, then the VARS key. And then I take option two, which is for normal CDF. Now, once I have that up on my screen, it's going to want me to give it the left endpoint, which is going to be negative 10 to the 99th power, comma, the right endpoint, which is negative 2.72. All right, so that's going to give me the first one. Then in my calculator, I'm going to push the plus sign, push the plus sign, and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hit second bars, and then I'm going to go and do the same thing again, option two, normal CDF, but this time I'm going to give it my left endpoint as 2.72 comma 10 to the 99th power. And again, in that way I can put them both in at the same time and get my solution. So that's what we're going to do in our calculator now. All right, so let's go ahead and check that out. So here's my calculator, and we're going to do just what we said. We're going to press the second key, press the VARS key, take option 2, and then we're going to give it negative 10 to the 99, so minus 10 to the 99th power, comma, negative 2.72. Close that up. You don't have to put the mean and standard deviation in this case because we're working with z, so we'll just close it up, hit plus. Then we'll do again, second vars, take option two, and it wants us to enter the values for the normal CDF again. This time we're going to give it 2.72, 2.72, comma, 10 to the 99th power. Close it up, hit enter, and we find that the answer is 0.0065. 0.0065. So the overall probability is 0 0.0065. That's for the area in both tails. And that's it.